learn to fight. Yo, John Fitch here, and I've got another episode of Learn to Fight for you. And we have another little educational video for you today. Again, in the garage, working with one of my students. Some months ago, I did a Learn to Fight, and it was a little Asian lady uh, leaving the bank who was targeted by some punks and uh, robbed. And the guy came up behind her, locked his hands around her waist from behind, picked her up, and slammed her on the ground. Uh, ended up breaking her back, I think, hurting her pretty badly. So today's lesson is what to do if someone comes up behind you and, and locks their arms around your waist, especially in the sense where they're going to try to lift you up. Because if you can get this technique down, if you can figure out this leg wrap, even if you're a much smaller person, you can prevent them from picking you up. I'm 225 to 235 pounds on any given day uh, in this, this video probably, and uh, my student is about 175, 180 pounds. Okay, so I, I have a much more size on him. I'm about 10 years younger. I'm big and strong. I should be able to lift him up easy. But with this leg wrap technique, he prevents that. I have tried this out with my son. My 11-year-old son, he's 105 pounds, 103 pounds maybe. I, I cannot pick him up off the ground and manipulate him how I want if he does this. I know this works, okay? I know this works. So even if you're a woman or a smaller person, knowing this will help prevent uh, you from getting picked up and thrown around, all right? Let's take a quick look at the video here. Um, I'm Again, I'm locking my hands under both arms. I'm not over his arms, I'm not over one arm. Those are different techniques uh, for that. You can, you can see how to escape those from my uh, free Intro to Practical Self-Defense course down below. Check it out there. This specifically is, I'm under both arms, I'm locked around the waist, I'm gonna pick him up, I'm gonna try to take him somewhere. Okay, whether I'm trying to pick him up and do a mat return, pick him up and slam him on the ground, pick him up and carry him off and put him in a van. Either way, he's trying to prevent me from picking him up and then he's gonna fight the hands and look to turn and face and then He's not gonna stop just then, he's gonna grapple uh, to a dominant position, right? So let's view some of these. So you can see I grab here and uh, I'm starting to lift. He wraps that leg around. You can see right, right in here, he's got that leg wrap. Now, he holds it a little bit too long. Sometimes he puts it there too long because I can exert my energy trying to lift him and that's when he needs to put it on and when I, I stop trying to lift, I put him down for a second, he can put both feet on the ground and, and focus on fighting the hands until the next time I try to start picking him up again. And you can feel it. You can feel when the person's trying to gear up and get ready to lift again. So uh, he's being a little bit too much OCD on keeping that leg wrap, but it's, it's better to, to over commit to that leg wrap than get picked up. So um, he's faulting on, on, a, on the good side. Right here, see right here, he could put his foot down and fight, focus on fighting the hands, but he just focuses on both, slows him down a little bit, and he fights for a dominant position, and then puts me into the wall. Pretty good, pretty pretty good application by him. A little bit too long on, on the leg, he can, he can take it off and focus on fighting the ha hands. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with turning around and pushing into the wall because uh, he specifically is worried about being on cruises, being on air flights, uh, being at the airport, being in those type of close quarter situations and, and a fight breaking out because he, he's ex-military, he carries a knife, he carries mace, he carries a gun with him when he can. Uh, he's trained in those things, he knows how to use them. But when he goes on vacation, he goes to sporting events and other places, he can't take those items with him. So uh, he's had some instances happen where he's like, yo, oh, I don't feel comfortable like this because I don't have any of my tools. What happens if someone attacks me? I don't know what to do. So now he's coming here and we're getting to these positions where we're controlling, we'll put him into the wall. Uh, you know, if somebody came at him and grabbed him on a plane, if somebody attacked him on the boat, he'd be able to do this and then wait for security, wait for police to show up. But you can see with him putting in that leg wrap, it prevents me from lifting. And then once the lift is stopped, he can start to attack the hands. What he's doing with the hands and the way he's supposed to attack the hands is he's supposed to go two on one. He wants both his hands, he wants those thumbs to dig in on a wrist. 
Either either one, either side. You got to feel which one feels better. Okay. The other thing you're doing is you're going to push those hands not straight down, but to your hip, because you want to push his wrist to the hip, right? Your hips strong. You want to push him on the hip bone, and then you start pushing your hip away, right? That way your hips separate from him and start taking that control away. If you want to control somebody, you got to be hip to hip, right? The the further your hips are away from each other, the least control you have. So you have to think of that. He's behind you. He's got you locked up. He's going to pick you up. You stop that lift with the leg wrap. Once he sets you back down, boom, you're on the hands and you're sticking your hips out, pushing away. Because that keeps my hands from going like this. You start pushing your hips away. It starts stretching my arms out. And then that grip gets long and then your hips are strong and pushing away. I'm not going to be able to hold it forever. I'm going to wear out. My muscles can't keep that grip forever. Let's, uh, let's view some more. Back at it here again. Lock up under the arms. He leg wraps. He gets the hands on my wrist. He's pushing. Sometimes he switches back and forth. He's, he's on the wrong wrist right there, but he manages to break the hands. We have another one here, grabbing again under the arms. You see the leg wrap come in. Once I set him down, he can start attacking. Now he's fighting hands. Fighting hands again as I locked him back up. He starts turning in. Not bad. Beats the elbow, gets an angle. Now he's looking for back control. Finds the wall, pushes me into the wall. Not bad, not bad. So you can see overall right there, he, he did a pretty good job. And it's such a simple, it's such a simple technique to leg wrap. Really, like you can you can practice this with your friends, no problem. To just grapevine that leg, prevent them from lifting you up. It can. Save you from broken back. <laughs> Save you from getting kidnapped. Teach your kids this. It's this. This does work. You know, I'm a 230 pound man, four time world champ. My 11 year old son can prevent me from picking him up if he does that. If he does the leg wrap, it works. It's solid technique. It's really good. There are plenty of defensive techniques from that back to get away from that back. I like to focus on the stuff of self defense that prevents me from going to the ground. Because if I can avoid the ground, that's that's best case scenario. Because you never know what that person has on them as far as weapons. You don't know if they're alone or have friends. You don't know if some bystander is gonna observe the situation in a wrong context and, and jump in and help the other person out. You, you, you don't know. You're better off de-escalating as much as possible, creating space, staying on your feet. I think it's best. If push comes to shove and they get in your face and you have to go hands on, I think there are better techniques to use than others. I'll be going over a lot of that stuff in the in the days to come, all right, in the videos to come. So pay attention. If you guys are looking to learn more and uh, start getting yourself familiar with with hand fighting and clinch stuff, I got I got videos and stuff for you uh, down below. I mentioned earlier the free intro to practical self defense course uh, that's down there. Check that out. It has some back escapes that keep you on your feet. Okay, we don't we don't necessarily want to go to the ground. There are uh, trips and other things you could you could very easily do from those situations to prevent you from getting picked up and slammed. But I would rather not go to the ground. I'd rather not. And in all honesty, if the, uh, if that lady knew a way to trip and fall and sweep to the ground in that situation like that would have been fine because like it would have been better than getting slammed you know even getting stuck on the ground would have been better than getting slammed in that moment so it would have been better if she learned and trained something so make sure you guys are make sure you know something right it's the whole it's better to be a warrior in the garden than it is to be a gardener at war right be that warrior in the garden guys thanks for watching Hope you learned something. Let me hear your comments, hear what you think. If you got any better techniques than the leg wrap to prevent them picking you up and slamming you, I'd like to hear it. Make sure you guys are liking, sharing, and subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll check you all later.